Okay, welcome to the second lecture for Exploration 1, Chapter 6. Strongly recommended that you watch the previous lecture, the actual lecture on the chapter materials, uh, Exploration 1, Chapter 6 lecture, before watching this on Exploration 1, Chapter 6, Seven Holy Steps of Subnetting. We're going to start out this particular lecture discussing subnetting and the basics of subnetting. In particular, we need to understand again the reason why we subnet. We subnet networks so that we can logically divide larger networks into smaller, more manageable network address spaces. This allows us to more efficiently use our addresses as they apply to our networks. This particular lecture is going to talk about standard subnetting. We're not going to talk about VLSM. We're going to teach you the seven holy steps of standard subnetting so that you then can understand those and move from there to the concept of VLSM, which is subnetting a subnet also discussed in the previous lecture. Now, you can subnet any address, whether it's private or public, uh, whether it's an RFC 1918 address or if it's an uh, actual public address. Before we do that, though, we do want to again talk about what we use in IP addresses. We use 32-bit addresses okay, that are base 2 systems, base 2 numbers. The two digits can be used in a base 2 system are a 0 and a 1. And we use an octet for what we do, which is from 2 to the 0 to 2 to the 7th power. So 1 to 128. <clears throat> so just like our decimal number system, a binary number system is used by raising uh, the base uh, to a particular power. 2 to the 0 is the 1, 2 to the 1 is 2, 2 to the 2, 4, and so on and so forth. Now, we need to know how to convert from decimal to binary. Remember, in our previous lecture, we talked about from decimal to binary, we use what is called a subtraction method. So we'll go in here. Now, this example is for the base 10 number system 12. So 12, 10. That's what this means right here, that it's a base 10 number. This example doesn't show you 2 to the 4th, 5th, 6th, or 7th. Okay, It's only showing you the four bit positions that apply. In this conversion, what we've already done and just left it off this slide is we've said, okay, the number 12, okay, can you subtract 128 from 12? The answer is no. So in the 2 to the 7th position, there's a 0 out here. Can you subtract 64 from 12? No, there's another 0. Can you subtract 16? No. Okay. Can you, uh, excuse me, 32? No. Then 16? No. So the first four bits out here that have been left off are 0, 0, 0, 0. We can subtract 8, so we subtract it and get a remainder, which is 4. And then we go and look and say, okay, we can subtract 4 from 4. That gives us a 1. So 1100 0, 0 is the same as 12. So again, using the subtraction method to do basic decimal to binary conversion. Here's another example doing 13. This is an example, again, showing that if you have an even number, the last bit position will have to be a 0. If you have an odd number, it has to be a 1. So same concept there. Now, if you want to convert the decimal number 191 to binary, take 191. Can you subtract 128 from it? The answer is yes. Turn that on. That leaves you with 63. Can you con uh, subtract 64 from that? The answer is no. Put a zero. Subtract 32 all the way across until you get your number of 10111111, which is the binary equivalent of the decimal number 191. All right. And here's 154, another example, the exact same thing. We're just doing the subtraction method to get our binary equivalent to the decimal number. Okay. Now, if we want to go the opposite way, if we want to go from binary to decimal, we simply add up the number positions that are turned on in the binary number. So in our example here, for the number 10101010, you would add 128 to 32 to 8 to 2. And that would give you 170, the 10 denoting that it is a decimal number because it's a base 10 number. Okay. Another example here, convert 11110000 to decimal. You add 128 to 64 to 32 to 16, gives you 240, base 10. Okay, so the decimal number 240. Here's some of the common conversions of subnets so that it's kind of quick and easy. If it's all ones, it's 255. If it's all ones, it's separate one zero, 254, 252, 248, 240, 224, 192, 128. Okay. 
uh, 1, 3, 7, 15, 31, 63, 127, and 255. Uh, also very common. These are probably ones you need to remember more than anything. The 128 to 255. Okay. Now, let's talk about the seven holy steps of subnetting. In particular, what I'm going to do is I want to show you this uh, document. I came up with seven easy steps that are pretty much foolproof for subnetting using standard subnetting. This is not for VLSM, this is for standard subnetting where you're going to use the same mask on all of your networks. Again, once you know how to do this, VLSM is easy because we just pull from those particular subnets to create other subnets. The first thing you have to do is remember again, subnetting, the purpose is to borrow host bits in order to determine the number of needed subnets. Okay? That's why step one is determine the number of needed subnets. It may be that I walk in and say you need 50 subnets or 20 subnets or 10 or whatever. It may be that I give you a network diagram okay, and I say, okay, as part of this network, okay, a network consisting of one router and two switches, okay, connected in the following fashion how many subnets will I need and this forces us to go back to the uh, previous lecture to remember that every router port must have at least one network on it so again if I'm given 192.168.12.0 slash 24 remember this is a class C it's one network net 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 host of 254 host. It's not going to work for my network here. I need two networks. So what can I do? I could go to my ISP and say, will you please give me another network? 192.168.13.0 slash 24. I know these are private addresses, but just work with me here. They would probably say no. Okay. Or if for some reason I wanted to keep the same internal network 192.168.12, I'm going to have to subnet. And this is where I'm going to take and I'm going to say, you know, I'm going to subnet this network to meet my needs. And to do that, I'm going to first determine the number of subnets I need. Well, that is going to be two because I have two router ports. So for this example, I need two networks. The next thing I'm going to do, okay, so I write in here, I need two subnets. Then I'm going to write out my host bits. So I look at my the network that I'm starting with, and I write out the number of host bits. In this example, I've got eight. How do I know that? Well, there's a couple reasons. One is it's a class C, which means it's net, 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 host. Okay. Also, I notice it's using a slash 24, so that's the default mask for a class C, which means I have three octets of ones in the mask. 255, 255, 255.0, and one octet of zeros, which means I have eight host bits. So we have eight host bits, all right, and we need to determine how many of those we need to borrow in order to get the needed number of subnets. Well, that is determined by an equation, and that equation is 2 to the n equals the number of usable subnets and n is the number of bits you must borrow. So if I look at this and I say okay so if I raise 2 to the first power okay so I've got to find a character here 2 to the first power that equals 2 subnets usable. Okay so I'm then going to borrow or set to 1 the number of bits that I am going to borrow. So 1 0 0 0 0 0 0 0. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So I've borrowed one bit. And then I'm going to find the decimal value of that. So it's 128 is the decimal value of 1 and 6 zeros. 7 zeros, excuse me. I can find my new mask by adding the default mask for a class C, which happens to be 255.255.255.0 to the value now in the fourth octet, which is 128. Step six, 
Find the value of the least tolerable bit turned on in each octet. This is from step four. So go up to step four and look and say, okay, my variable, okay, the, the one position is on at the two to the seventh bit position. So that means that my variable for the subnet is 128. Okay, so the variable equals 128. So my subnets are going to roll by 128. We now find our ranges. We start with a major network number and we go until we have rolled the fourth octet by the variable. Now 0 to 127 is actually 128 positions. So that is our variable. The next one is 192.168.12.128 okay. to 192.168.12.255. We now have our two subnets. We borrowed one host bit to build you to make two subnets. Okay? And then we could do the following. We could come over here to our example network and we can say on this side over here we're going to use 192.168.12.0 slash 25 because that's our new mask now. And on this side we're going to use 192.168.12.128 slash 25. Okay. We're going to get rid of this network here because we broke it into two subnets. Our first usable IP address that could be put on this host, or excuse me, this router is 192.168.12.1 with a subnet mask of 255.255.255.128. That would be used on this link's interface. On this link's interface we would use 192.168.12.129 255, 255, 255, 128. Again, because the first address is the network or subnetwork address, and the last address is 127, is the broadcast address, and 128 is the network address for the other subnet, and 255 is the broadcast for the su second subnet. So, subnet 0 and subnet 1, by borrowing one bit, we're able to accommodate this particular network. Now, let's think about this. Let's change things a little bit. Let's go in here and let's add two more switches. Okay. And I'm going to have to go into my router and turn off the router a second and add in a an H wick, just an, some extra some extra ethernet connections. Okay. And I'm going to connect port 24 to just one of the Ethernet ports I just put on the switch or on the router, excuse me, which is actually a switch on a, on a WIC. I now have four interfaces on the router. So, I go back up here and I say I need four subnets, okay, because my number of needed subnets, I've got four interfaces on the router, I need four subnets. I write out my host bits, still the same. This is a step later on you'll be able to actually just ignore because it's it occurs so quickly um, you know you basically know okay it's still my major network of 192 let's put out here it's still 192.168.12.0 slash 24 that's my major network so I know I have eight host bits now when you think about I need four subnets so what power do I have to raise to two in order to get four that would be two to the second power because two times two is four gives me four subnets on step four, I turn on or set to one the number of bits you borrowed from step three. Okay, so I'm borrowing two bits, so I need to turn on two bits. Okay, and find the decimal value. Well, now that's 128 plus 64, so that's 192. Figure out the new subnet mask by adding the decimal value from step four to the default mask. And so our new subnet mask is 255, 255, 255. Dot one nine two or slash twenty six, okay. Because if you convert this to binary, I have twenty six ones in my subnetwork mask. Okay. Now we'll come in here and find the value of the least holder bit turned on. So I go in here and go, okay. Not the first holder bit, but the least holder bit. The value there is 64. So our variable in this octet, the fourth octet, is 64. We now have to do our ranges by our new variable when we borrowed 
two bits. Okay. So 64127. And we have to come down another page here. 12.12.128. 192.168.12.191 And one thing I'll show you is the last subnet range always begins with the value found in the subnet mask for that particular subnetting scheme. So now we have four subnets instead of one and these four subnets okay, can be applied over here as our ranges. Okay? And again, it would be with a mask of 255.255.255.192 for all of these. Okay? Or again, slash 26. Now, that would mean that one of these interfaces would be 12.1 slash 26, 12.65 slash 26, 12.129 slash 26, and 12.193 slash 26. All right. So we took one network, 192.168.12.0 slash 24. We subnetted it to allow for four subnets. Okay. And then we broke it into four separate subnets. You could continue this. Let's say we needed eight subnets. Okay, um, you could do eight subnets, and you'd go in here. How many two to the two times two is four, four times two is eight, so it'd be two to the third equals eight subnets. Okay, and then we would have to borrow a third bit, which would give us two twenty-four, which would change it to two two four, to make it a slash twenty-seven. Our variable is now the third, the last bit turned on, which in this case is 32. And now we would change and so on and so forth until we got all eight of our subnets. So this is an easy way for you to do subnetting using uh, very little math. Okay. Now the example here in the slideshow, again, determine the, needed, uh, the number of needed subnets. In this case, he needs 25 networks. Okay, So he's going to go in and write out his host bits. Now he used, they use as their starting address uh, 172.16.24.10. Really not a good way to do it. Just use 172.16.0.0 or 172.16.24.10. Um, goes in and he's going to find his mask. Okay, He's going to say, Step two, determine the number of hosts. Well, since this is a class C, excuse me, class B, you have 16 host bits. Okay. So you're going to go in here, number of subnets, you need 25 subnets. So what power would you need to raise 2 to? You'd have to do 2 to the fifth to get at least 32 subnets to have enough. Then you'll go in and turn on 5 bits, which will give you a value of 255.255.248.0 or slash 21. You will then find the value of the last high order bit in each octet. Now this is important because when you cross the bit boundaries, you have to do each octet. Here's a 1, okay, so 128, 64, 32, 16, 8. So the value is 8 that's turned on. That's going to be a variable in the third octet. In the fourth octet, you don't have a variable because you didn't borrow anything from it. And then you're going to go in here and you're going to do your ranges. Okay. So 172.16.0.0 to 172.16.7.255. Notice you didn't borrow anything at all from the fourth octet, so you just roll it by the whole value. Okay. Then you have 172.16.8.0 to 172.16.15.255, and so on and so forth, until you get your entire subnetting scheme completed. All right. Um, that is, and here are all the subnets once you do all of them together. That is the basics of how you use the seven holy steps of subnetting to do subnetting. Again, determine the number of needed subnets, write out your host bits before your particular network that you're trying to subnet based upon the, the class of address and the prefix that's been given to you. Determine the number of subnets you need using the formula 2 to the n equals the number of usable subnets. 
turn on or set to one the number of bits you borrow convert that to decimal add that to the existing mask to get your new subnet mask step six find the highest uh, least high order bit turned on find the value there that will be your variable in that octet and then find your ranges one other thing there's another formula that is useful for you to know and it's two raised okay, to the h power minus two equals the number of hosts per subnet and h in this case equals equals number of host bits so if I want to look at this particular setup I borrowed three bits from step four there's one two three four five host bits left so and when you borrow three bits it's two raised to the fifth power minus two would equal the number of host per subnet and in this case it's 30 because two to the fifth is 32 minus two is 30 so there's 30 hosts per subnet that formula it's useful in case someone asks you to create your subnets based on the size of the subnets, so the number of hosts, not the number of subnets. So if I come to you and say, I need you to do subnet of class C to support 30 hosts per subnet, you would know that you would need to borrow three bits um, because you have to leave five host bits. I hope this has been helpful. I will work uh, a couple examples and actually show them to you in other videos so that you'll get a better idea of how the seven holy steps of subnetting can help you with your subnet. If you have any questions, please let me know.